<clears throat> Turn your Bibles over to Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. So it's interesting, I was preparing the sermon just... ...a good subject to talk about. But turn there to Hebrews 4. Uh, Hebrews 4. What's interesting about the book of Hebrews, I mean, uh, well, the book of Hebrews is, is a great book. His rest, right? That we don't rely on our works. It's the rest we get in Him because of the work that He did. And the title of the, the message this morning is Sharp Guard for the Heart. I want to talk about the heart. And, you know, after the events of yesterday with the uh, assassination attempt of Donald Trump, we should, we, I could have called it matters of the heart, right? And where the heart really lies. Soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched, with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points. Earlier this week, I thought, you know, it'd be just really good. There are certain subjects that are really cool to talk about in the Bible, like the Bible addresses certain animals. members. And the Bible actually talks about the heart a lot. This is actually, I'll probably preach on the heart more than, than once in my life. Heart in the Bible. Um, and so today it's, a, I'm looking at it from a very basic viewpoint. Like what is the heart? Uh, what's the purpose of the heart? I mean, I'm going to just give you a real basic anatomy lesson, but I think it's really good to know that, it, you know, the anatomy of the heart is just a hollow pump-like organ of blood circulation composed mainly of rhythmical, contractile, smooth, bad blood, and all good blood go through the heart. And so the heart actually plays a very important function. Not only that, the heart also uh, has electrical impulses, and so it actually... Lower, it's because it's compensating for the lack of things, or it's actually providing energy that you need. Um, and so that's interesting. But then the other thing that the other the innermost or central part of anything. The vital or essential part, you know, the core, uh, obviously it's also talking about the breast or the bosom. We're very familiar with that uh, upside down pyramid with the arches. And then of course it has other, other things. 
And then another thing that the heart is uh, really important, and, you know, we use it in our everyday vocabulary. Change of heart. I mean, we've heard all these things, right? Actually, you know, today, after what happened yesterday, we could look at the heart of the nation. What is the heart of this nation, right? And where are we headed as a nation with the events? Right? It's also for the emotional. My dad had a quintuple bypass surgery back in 1999. And he attributes it to, he was, uh, he started smoking when he was 10 years old. Uh, heart attack that led him to the quintuple bypass surgery, you know, him and I had discussions at length was the stress. He just had a lot of stress uh, from life. His heart gave out and they had to basically run uh, different arteries just to get circulation back in there. And I remember him saying that after the surgery, he felt like he was of his body at the right amount of, you know, at the right frequency. And even to this day, you know, this is back in 1988. Surgery had already gotten way better, but even then, you know, your your life expectancy after heart surgery was only a couple of. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but he takes a lot of pills. Um, he self-diagnoses. Doctors are the worst patients. Just so you, just, just so you guys know. Um, uh this is all of these. The Bible talks about the physical heart, and that's really the first thing I want to focus on. And what's really interesting about the Bible? Turn over to Genesis six. Turn over to Genesis six, where we, where, where we feed. The Bible talks there, I mean, uh, before I give you that, from a physical and emotional standpoint, the heart plays a really interesting role, right? So your muscle for life. Its parts work together to move blood through your body in a coordinated way. It constantly sends oxygen to your cells and takes away waste. Many conditions can affect this organ and keep it from working well. The heart. You make up this powerhouse and your heart contains four mus muscular sections or chambers that briefly hold blood before moving it and then the other thing is electrical impulses make your heart beat moving blood through these chambers point the heart can actually be hardened and, what, and I thought this was interesting as I was doing this. It says a hardened heart can refer to a biological process that about clogged arteries, which is also part of why we have like heart surgery. But it's actually talking about the muscles. I didn't know this part. It says this can happen due to aging, kidney. Uh, blood vessels and the electrical signals that make the heart's muscles beat. The exact mechanism behind heart calcification is still largely unknown. In other words, a hardened heart is still unknown. Now we know, because the Bible gives this clear indication as to who hardens the heart, but I always looked at it from the biblical But there's literally a condition where the heart is also hardened from a physical condition. And it's unknown. 
They don't know where it comes from. We know where it comes from. And about uh, that, and then at the end, it, it says, but the exact hardening mechanism, again, is largely unknown. So like they, it, it's just something that, it, it's mentioned twice in this article, and I'm not, I'm not gonna go deep into it. But if you go there to Genesis 6, we see that God's, you know, we get through Genesis 1 through 6, and basically it's the beginning of, of humanity. At the time, and by the time we get to Genesis 6, it says, And God saw, in verse 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. But here's where, where it gets interesting. It says, and, and it repented the Lord that he God has a heart. Right? Of course, God is, a, is perfect, so his heart's always going to be. But it's interesting that what we do, what we think continually, will grieve the Lord's heart. It says that every imagination stage, whether it was a conspiracy, whether it was not, what's the thought of man? Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. It's, it's, it's a physical thing. Not only is the heart physically there to keep us alive, but it's also pumping out deceitfulness and evil continually if we're not guarding it, right? It says, in the Lord grieved him at his heart. What's interesting is you get to Genesis 8 after the flood, and we go there to Genesis 8 just a few chapters over, and, and there in verse 21 it says, you know, Noah comes off. sweet savor and the Lord said in his heart I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake but here's the thing that's interesting point it says for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth neither will I against my Which is, he got he he destroyed the world except for eight people. These are eight saved people, right? But they're not perfect. You know, that you do not have to have a change of heart when you're saved, because the Bible says that they came off the boat, and he says, "I'm still not going to destroy it because the imagination of man's heart." to understand not only for ourselves but also for our children we are na by nature thinking evil thoughts by nature we lean toward right I mean this young man whoever he was whatever the reasons, whether he was influenced by other people or just on his own, what was his thoughts? Evil, continue just inflict some kind of pain. It's an evil thing, the heart, if we don't guard it, right? Go over to Genesis 42. Just, I'm going to give you some scripture, but I'm going to drive this point home right here. It says, Genesis 42 is after Joseph is now second in command and there's a famine in the land and his brothers come and ask for some food. I'm just giving you quick stories because we're not focused on that, right? But here he says, Then Joseph commanded in verse 25 to fill their sack with corn and restore every man 
money, man's money to his sack and to give them provision for the way. And thus did he unto them. And they laid at their asses with corn and departed thence. And as one of them opened his sack to give his ass provision, And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And their heart failed them, and they were afraid, saying one another, What is this that God hath done unto us? Have a reaction to the things that happen to us in life. You know, it's a real thing. <clears throat> and the reason I touched it from both aspects is because we first have of our lives, both positive or negative, right? I mean, if you have a stressful life, it's going to affect your organs. If you have a, a healthy life, it's going to affect your organs. But it's not just enough physical aspect. We will add, obviously, the emotional or spiritual aspect. Go over to Genesis 45, verse 20, uh, 25, and then I'll have you turn to Jeremiah. But it says that Canaan unto Jacob, their father, and they told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive and is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. Have you ever gotten into some just really shocking or bad news? Where do you feel it? You feel it right here in your heart. You know, when I get fired up, my heart starts beating really fast. You know, one of the things that, that was hard for me, facing difficult situations, because I just get, my adrenaline is really high. And sometimes it even makes me, my hands tremble. And, you know, people look at that as like a sign of fear, they don't realize I'm just high octane. Sometimes that's just reflected in just like my body. My, my body will start to tremble a little bit just because I'm, I'm expending a lot of energy. And you, well, you know what I feel it? In my heart. It has nothing to do with me being afraid or not. You know, my heart was always beating. And you can, you know, at night, I don't know, as I've gotten older, I can hear my heart in my ear. You know, it's like, it's just pumping. Right? The heart really does. Lot of the things we do, it's, it's also a good barometer for what we shouldn't do, right? If you're out of shape, your heart will tell you real quick, right? And, and, and uh, things like that. But go over to, or I'll read for you really quick in Psalm 104. In verse 14, he says, He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth. wine is talking about non non-alcoholic wine. It says, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's make our heart strong, right? But it's also something that, so we have a, God wants, I mean, it's vital to our life. We need to have this motor in order to function, but then there's the other, the other side of the coin, which is the, the thoughts of, of our heart are evil continually. So we, these, these are things that we have to learn to balance. Go to Jeremiah. Chapter 31, verse 13. That thou mayest be saved, how long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? For a voice declareth from Dan, and published affliction from Mount Ephraim. Make ye men mention to the nations, behold, publish against Jerusalem. And give out their voice against the cities of Judah. As the keepers of a field, are they against her round about? Because she hath been rebellious against me, saith the Lord. Thy way and thy doings have procured these things unto thee. This is why the way my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet. You know what happened yesterday when those shots rang out, you know, in Pennsylvania, a lot of hearts were beating really fast. Some people were probably pained. You know, if you're older, We, we, we see situations, it happens rarely, but it does happen, where you see someone, someone's wife or husband pass away, and shortly thereafter, what happens?
and they died of a broken heart. The heart just gives out. So physically, the heart is affected also from a spiritual standpoint. You don't have to turn there. Go ahead and turn over to Psalm 6. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. So God's proclaiming a judgment and he's saying, hey, when, when a woman's delivered, Right? And what are they doing? They're monitoring the baby's heart rate, rate and they're monitoring the mom's heart rate. And as a matter of fact, on the last time that, uh, you know, when a uh, serious situation where she almost bled out, and one of the things they monitored was her heart, and her heart was uh, under a lot of duress. And the Bible says, hey, look, sometimes things are going to happen. Right? That's why women want to have children in youth because their hearts can handle it. Right? Why did God have the armies only be from 20? Physiology, right? As we get older, I still feel like I'm a young man, but my body reminds me that I'm not that young anymore. Right? I mean, let's just be honest. Our hearts are quick. I don't even have the EKG turned on because my dad knows that I, I have uh, paranoia about my physical, like I want to be in good health. He's like, don't turn it on because anytime it tells you that your heart beats off, you're going to call me and ask me for some medical advice. <laughs> he already knows. And, and, and I'll just get off of that. So my dad, uh, here in the United States, he's an uh, ultrasound technician. And uh, one of the things that he's really good at, there's very few people that do echocardiography. I had to read EKG studies. I mean, obviously, I can't do it now. This was many years ago, and I wasn't going in that profession. But I used to read those reports, you know, and then write the uh, conclusion. And then they would pay us a fee for that. But what's interesting, what I learned was the heart doesn't beat regularly like people think. So the heart beats regularly during the day. So you want a regular heartbeat when you Well, it turns out God made it really uh, a really great thing that the heart resets at night. And that's why it's so hard. I know, Pastor, you were It'll just speed up, and then it'll slow down. It almost look like you're dying, and then it'll just speed up again, and then it'll skip a beat. It'll skip two or three. It's where you have these big gaps and then you find the arrhythmia and all that stuff. But I didn't, you know, I just think it's really cool because, uh, you know, sometimes you have to reset your phone and you have to reset your computer. You know, God already resets you. Every, that's why he says, you know, so the growing body of evidence suggests that psychological factors are literally heartfelt and can contribute to cardiac risk. A broken heart. problems as well as slow development. Some factors that can increase a sense of vulnerability and lead to heart and heart include sensitivity and chronic stress. Uh, and it's also
because you've rejected me, I've now hardened your heart. Because you didn't hearken to me, I've hardened your heart. So we have to be careful to guard our hearts physically and emotionally because God takes this very My prayer, preserve my life from, of, uh, from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword. Of laying snares privily, they say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities, they accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. Go over to Ezekiel 11. I'm just going to read for you a couple of verses, but go over to Ezekiel 11. Here's the problem. The devil has already set his heart and he wants to be like God. And then people listen to the devil and what ends up happening? We set our heart. People are just basically trying to either live forever they want power to be like God, so they act like God. They're basically running around telling you how you should live your life. This is what you need to do. The Bible says in Proverbs 23.15, you're going to Ezekiel 11, but Proverbs 23.15 says, My son, if thine heart be wise, So if we seek wisdom, God's heart will rejoice, right? The Bible says in Psalm 44, 18, the Bible says, Our heart is not turned back, neither have us, our steps declined from thy way, though thou hast sore broken us in the place of dragon, row, there be a test that can open up the heart of a man or a woman and tell you what's inside. Honestly, I could, you know, we have pattern uh, recognition, we have body language. never know like you you hear the stories remember uh when jeffrey dahmer got caught a lot of people were like oh well we didn't suspect anything you know he was a normal guy he's a little odd to himself but he was a normal guy i mean uh what's his name to young ladies i mean to this day he has like a, a girl fan club, you know, following him around because he was, he was, he could act normal, but a uh, serial killer, you know, the, today's 25 years from the time that he turned himself in just you know, people thought he was just a normal Mexican guy. You know, I hate that he's... He, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and I will give them... And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Turn over to Jeremiah 23 really quick, because Jeremiah is easy to find in such a big book. But Jeremiah 23... But, you know, you think about Josiah, the Bible says that man after God's own heart, right? David sought to protect his heart, and the only way he knew how was to be a man after God's own heart. 
And let me tell you something, David was a man after Even if we know all this, you know what we're still going to do? We're still going to have thoughts, evil, evil thoughts continually. You know, we have to guard our minds and our eyes. heaven and earth, saith the Lord. I have heard what the, the prophet said. The prophecy lies in the, my name, saying, I have dreamed a dream. How long shall of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name, by their dreams, which they tell everyone to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name. So the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in in her pangs. So we see this again, it's both physical and figurative because he's taking, he's saying the heart of Edom, well the heart I don't, I don't know if you've ever studied how riots develop. You know what's so dangerous about Hurricane Barrel? It's actually not the damage, it's the heart of the people. They, they did a study after the riots, the L.A. riots of 1993, I think it was. You know, remember O.J. Simpson, he was acquitted. Some of us are old enough to remember the, if it don't fit, it don't acquit, whatever the glove. Dying down. Well, what happens is, and that's why I wanted to point out the physical aspect of it. Our hearts give out an electrical impulse. Well, that impulse goes out. It's, at, it's an actual magnetic, like an I mean, as you start getting this wave that you can't stop. I don't know if you've ever been at a concert or you've been at a, at a venue and all of a sudden you can just feel like a change, right? Something's not right. And you just... And the reason that you're feeling that is because those pulses are going out. You know, the, the, it, it really is this dangerous thing. You know, yesterday, what happened? You saw a mass panic. Some people... It was all because people are just losing their mind. The cops have been busier this week in Houston and Harris County than they've probably been all year. I mean, I literally beseech his arm and whose heart departeth from the We need to understand the heart in order to understand how to have a righteous heart. And let me explain this properly. You can't have a righteous heart. There's rest that then we can read for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, right?
But then the second part of a righteous heart is that then we have to cleave unto the Lord. But our hearts depart from the Lord continually, and then we want But before I continue, I just wanted to pause here. I, I made a note. I just wanted to pause. With social media now, you don't even need to watch the news. Everybody has an opinion. Who's wrong? So immediately, everybody's like, well, you know, this was staged. This is, uh, you know, the powers that be, the secret service was. I probably lie, you know, if you ask me what I thought, I think, you know, from a political theater standpoint, I'm probably in the middle. I'm probably like, yeah, they've been trying to take out Donald Trump. I think that's But what I can tell you from a biblical standpoint is that our nation's heart has departed from the Lord. The reality of this whole political theater some video about how he had a prophetic dream that Donald Trump was going to be in a situation where a bullet was going to whiz by his ear and it was going to pop his eardrum and see it came true. And so, and, and during this, the nation and blah, like literally this is all within the last 24 hours. And he did, he, he recorded this a couple months ago. And you're like, oh, well then he must be live in a world that's called reality TV where everything is staged. I'm not saying it's, I don't know. I'm just saying from a biblical perspective, that's not actual true. It says they are prophets of the Christian, our proper response from a people that want to follow God's heart is we go look for the lost. There's a dying world and Trump is not going to say, I don't care how cool it was that he got up there. He's like saying, fight, fight, fight. You know what, how we fight? We fight the spiritual battle for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I, I'm not that impressed with the fact that he got up. That's the Christian response. You don't, don't get caught up in all the theater. Just take things for what they are. The Bible tells us that there's going to be room. So, because all of a sudden, people are like, you know, it's, you know, this is the end time, blah, blah, blah. You watch. It hasn't even gotten good. Just give it about a week. We're going to get some really good stuff. Because he got up and he had a, head, a wound to his head. I mean, there's a lot of things that are, are going to come out. But what I will tell you as a church, our response is, next, life goes on. We got to go and deal with mean, Obviously, listen to the events, pay attention, discern. But don't depart from the heart of the Lord. Go there to verse 6. Those people that depart from the Lord in verse 6 is, For he shall be like a heath in the desert. Desolate is what that means, right? It shall not see when the good cometh, but shall in the salt land and not inhabit it. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. 
For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her sea when the heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. But here's the problem. We, we like to quote this, but do we really apply it in our life? The heart. From a physical standpoint, it's deceitful. I remember going when I first started doing it, I'd be like, Dad, this looks like an arrhythmia, or this looks like this. And he's like, no, that's what it looks like. But, but spiritually, it's also deceitful. It says, and desperately wicked. It's not just wicked. You're following the Lord, and you're basically holding it down because all it wants to do is just be set loose to be wicked. I remember a couple years ago, we were still living in our first places about almost like a decade ago. And I, we woke up one morning before church. We were already coming to this church. And we had a cat. We have a cat, but we had another cat that I... In, in our little whatever backyard area, you because know, we were living in these condos, you know how they're all set aside and they have these little backyards that are real tiny. And well, I mean, I'm used to carrying they, like it would fit in this bowl. And I went out there to grab it for my wife because she loves kitties and this thing just went nuts on me. It's like <laughs> scratch my hands up. I had to throw it away. Like, I mean, it literally was like And this thing's desperate to get out. And it's just doing everything in its power. It's, it's gnawing and scratching and trying to bite me. That's what the heart is. It's deceitful. Desperately wicked. You're holding it and you think it's a cute little kitty. Oh, just follow your heart. And really the heart's like, it's just like, let, let me go. Can know it. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. That's another interesting uh, sermon about the reins. E even to give every man according to his ways. And we're either going to do the will of the Lord or we're going to do what we think is best and then the Lord's going to reward us accordingly. real or not real, when we've disobeyed the Lord for so long. I mean, it's not a coincidence that Category 2 hurricane in Texas. Category 1. Somebody was... Category 1. I mean, literally, as a Texan... You guys have lived here in Texas a long time. I see only one. One is a joke. Is it not? I mean, who's scared of a Category 1 hurricane? Nobody. Literally, we should not have had the last week with the Hurricane 1. But I really think it's the judgment of God. It's the things that are coming down because we've departed from the heart of the Lord. Timothy 1 verse 3. But in Deuteronomy 30 verse 5, the Bible says, And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land of the, which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good. And thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart 
and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live it. And that thou mayest live, sorry. It's interesting. Circumcision of the heart. But who circumcises the heart? God does through Jesus Christ. Right? If we circumcise our heart, we'd be dead. Like literally, like, you know, if we did. For they shall see God. Psalm 2, I mean, Psalm 24, verses 3 and 5 says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure. Heart. Noah and seven other people got off the boat, praised the Lord, and then immediately afterwards got drunk and did unseemly. the heart of man when you depart from the Lord. Hey, you leave me to my own devices, I just, I mean, I'll procrastinate. I'll be lazy. Right? You know that the heart is deceitful when you catch, like, your one-year-old, right, or your two-year-old, right, and they're, they're not even doing anything. But you're like, hey, what's going on? I was just asking what you're doing. And they're like two, three years old, right? But why? Because they're already trying to do things against mommy and daddy. Right? Isn't that the worst? Like I remember when, when you're, you know, your parents walk into the room. That's a dead giveaway. But I mean, isn't that the way God catches us? Why aren't you at church? Why aren't you soul winning? Why haven't you read your Bible? Nothing. You're there first. Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do, over 40 years. And we, this is the first assassination attempt in over 40 years. Four decades, almost half a century. But really, the heart of the matter is, the nation is just lost. Anointed by God. All leaders are anointed by God. The Bible says that he guides them like the rivers. They're like, oh, God spared Donald Trump. I believe that. I believe God spared Donald Trump. I just. I absolutely believe 100% that the Lord saved him. I just don't know that he saved him for the right reasons. I just don't see in the Bible filth and somehow Donald Trump's just going to come in and make your lives better. I just don't see it. What I see is if you go to the book of Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel,
That's what I see. I don't see a people that God's going to come in and coddle us and put, him, put, put, him, uh, put us in his bosom and say, it's all right, don't worry. Donald Trump's going to take care of you. I mean, from a political theater standpoint, let me just go off on a little tangent here for two minutes. Like, you can't say anything bad about Trump. I mean, literally, the... ...or not, you know, let's just use logic. If he had opposition, the conversations in those back rooms are like, there's no way in God's green earth that anybody's even going to challenge out, right? Biden came. I mean, literally, you couldn't have planned this better. If it's not planned, whoa, that's a pretty good, it's a pretty good turnout. Biden or Trump, what's our nation headed to? Look, we're not solving the heart of the nation. Yeah, Trump will be better for us economically. I really believe that. I mean, if you ask me, who do you think, uh, if you had to vote? As, and what's the, the heart of our nation is not one that's run by the economy. It's one that's run by our morality. Look, our morality is just corrupt. So, yeah, I mean, God controls, I think, major. He's Look, the, the devil has a lot of power, but not without God's permission. Just read the book of Job, right? I mean, he's like. Of prayer, but I just want you to have a sharp guard for your heart, and it's the Word of God. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for teaching us so much about our physical nature and how much it affects. We have to fight the flesh, and the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and, and desperately wicked. So Lord, help us to be reminded each morning that, man, I, I, sometimes I feel it in my gut or in my heart. A hurricane, no electricity, uh, you know, assassination.